I'm Julia Paskin. Join me as I talk with NPR's Sarah McCammon about her new book, The Exvangelicals, Loving, Living, and Leaving the White Evangelical Church. That's April 25th at the Crawford. Tickets at las.com slash events. LAS Studios. Today on the LA Report. It's solar eclipse day. Do you have your viewing glasses? The peak of the half eclipse we'll see in Southern California happens late in the morning. A landmark on the Palos Verdes Peninsula will have to be moved to expend those funds on a site that has decimated our structures and parking lot and hardscapes just uh, is not reasonable nor sound. And a new photo exhibit in Long Beach documents the history of a hub of Chicano activism in the city. Good morning. It's Monday, April 8th. I'm Suzanne Watley, and you're listening to the L.A. Report from LAist 89.3. The total solar eclipse is this morning. In Los Angeles, we'll see 50 percent. The Griffith Observatory says this morning's partial solar eclipse will start at 10.06, and by around 10.40, you'll be able to see a pretty good-sized bite taken out of the sun. The peak is going to be around 11.12, and it'll be all over by 12.22 this afternoon. The sky should be mostly clear, especially in the mountain and desert areas. The National Weather Service says that any marine layer clouds near the coast should burn off by the start time. Even though California is not in the path of totality, you can still get in on the celestial celebrations with space merch. LAist reporter McKenna Sievertson has your options. T-shirts, mugs, posters, a playlist. The solar souvenirs are endless. To watch the eclipse, you'll need a pair of protective glasses, and Bill Nye and his science guy bow tie are featured on a pair from the Planetary Society. Drawing inspiration from its namesake, Sunships is celebrating with a special offering, but the pineapple habanero and black bean spicy gouda flavor will only be available during the 4 minute and 27 second eclipse window. And after a long day of traveling for the totality, a spritz of the Soleil Noir perfume can remind you of the essence of these celestial events. I'm McKenna Siebertson. You can read more of our eclipse coverage online at LAist.com. In Rancho Palos Verdes, officials at Wayfarer's Chapel say the landslide-damaged landmark will never reopen at its current location. They're now looking for a new place that will likely be on the peninsula and replicate the same memorable view of the Pacific Ocean. The chapel's executive director, Dan Burchett, says rebuilding on the current site could cost millions and be too risky. Too expend those funds on a site that has decimated our structures and parking lot and hardscapes just uh, is not reasonable nor sound. The chapel closed in February after a series of winter rainstorms. City geologists told Elias that the land has moved almost two and a half times faster in recent months. Coming up, how renewable energy sources come with environmental trade-offs. Support for LAist comes from the Southern California Horticultural Society, hosting the Ruth Boren Lecture Series in honor of Ruth Boren and her love of Mediterranean climate gardens. Curator Brian Kemble of the Ruth Bancroft Garden in Walnut Creek will lead a lecture titled All Plants Come From Somewhere, How Plant Origin Clues Make Us Better Gardeners, April 12th at the Blinn House in Pasadena and live-streamed on Zoom. You can learn more and become a member of the Southern California Horticultural Society at SoCalHORT.org. Support for LAS comes from the LA84 Foundation, hosting the Play Equity Summit April 17th. Celebrate 40 years of impact and join the Play Equity movement to level the playing field for all kids to have access to sport and play. Register at LA84.org. Back now to the L.A. Report. Renewable energy sources play a big role in California's efforts to reduce emissions, but researchers say they bring their own set of environmental impacts. CAP Radio's Manola Sakaida explains. 
A recent UC Davis study investigated the growth of renewable energy and its impact on surrounding ecosystems. Some negative impacts associated with renewables, like that of wind turbines on birds, are pretty well known. But the authors of the study say that the positives or negatives could depend largely on the plans of the people implementing them. Uzma Ashraf is a co-author of the report. She studies the intersection of renewable energy and biodiversity at UC Davis. We are not saying we have to not install solar panels or the wind farms, but we are saying that we have to avoid the conflicts that exist currently and which is also going to increase in the future. She says kit foxes are one species that could benefit from the introduction of renewables. The foxes live in hot, arid places like deserts and have used solar panels for shelter in the past. That is the case when there is no fence. Many solar farms have like the fenced So when there is fence, the kit foxes cannot reach the solar panels. She says she hopes more developers building out renewable infrastructure will factor wildlife into their plans. This, she says, is key to building out renewables without feeding into the already concerning trend of declining biodiversity. In Sacramento, I'm Anola Sakaira. A new photo exhibit in Long Beach documents activity in the shadow of the 1970s Chicano movement in L.A. At the time, activists in Long Beach were busy providing summer school for young people, meal programs, and housing assistance at Centro de la Raza. The exhibit focuses on the center's nearly forgotten history and impact. Julie Bartolotto is executive director of the Historical Society of Long Beach. This show reflects a very important movement, and out of this movement comes a change in political power for Chicanos and Latinos. The center launched careers in politics, civil service, and education. For more details, go to LAist.com. The National Weather Service is predicting windy conditions throughout parts of the Southland today. A wind advisory is in effect this morning from 8 to 5 for valleys in Riverside and San Bernardino counties, where winds out of the north are expected to reach as high as 40 miles an hour. And there's a separate wind advisory currently in effect for Ventura County Mountains. For listening to the LA Report. You can read more news at LAist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. The AM edition is hosted and produced by me, Suzanne Watley, with assistance from producer Tyler Wayne. Our engineer is Federico Garcia Rodriguez. Catherine Mailhouse is the Director of Content Development. LAist's executive editor is Megan Garvey. Original music by Scott Kelly. Check back here at 4 for the PM edition. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible. Please donate at laist.com slash join. And the LA Report is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. I'm Julia Paskin, host of Weekend Edition. Join me as I talk with NPR's Sarah McCammon about her new book, The Exvangelicals, Loving, Living, and Leaving the White Evangelical Church. She's not alone in leaving the church. She's found she's among a rising generation fleeing the fold. That's April 25th at the Crawford in Pasadena. Tickets at laist.com slash events.